Today, let's talk about sponsorship and how to get it to help you aspiring racers or to help you fans simply understand how those company names get on the side of race cars when those names are not family, friend, or gentleman driver deals. There are three type of sponsorship pitches. Number one, the driver or team owner looks in the mirror and agrees to spend the money. Or number two, the presentation is made to the decision makers whose last names match that of the racer. The pitch usually starting with, hey mom and dad, I was thinking. And number three, real deals where someone is convincing an actual company that motorsport sponsorship makes business and marketing sense for their brand and its objectives. This show is about number three. Sponsorships and motorsport marketing is a large part of what I do when I'm not doing this. And it was a big part of the reason we did not have time to do a shakedown show from Petit Le Mans. I was running around trying to put the finishing touches on the next three years of sponsorships. For Hertz Racing and other partners, some of the new ones, primarily in this new 2014 series called the Tudor United Sports Car Championship. Now sponsorship comes down to branding, brand fit, and real and relevant sales and marketing activation. Things a sponsor will want to do at the races, plus away from the races, in the marketplace, in the media, and online. Sound boring? Sound too corporate? Well, you want to race, right? And you're not a trust fund baby? Then suck it up, because this is step one to be a racer. Even if you're a mega talent, you got to start here with sponsorship, finding the funds to get on the track to get noticed. So it's time to learn a bit about how sponsorships work and how to make it happen. It's time for Shakedown University, schooling that helps you be a racer. This show will not be the end all on selling motorsport sponsorships, just an overview to set your mind on a starting path. So today let's discuss what you are really selling, why companies sponsor racing, who to target, and a key point on how it all actually happens. That's the start, here we go. What are you selling? The product, you, is best sold when framed in context of why your racing is relevant to the sponsor. But selling sponsorship is not about you. In truth, they don't care about whether you want to race or not. It's all about what they need and what racing, your racing, can give them. Just think about what works when you try to have, like, sex, you know, without paying for it. In both cases, sponsorship and sex, it's good to start with a clear statement of what the hell you want them to consider and decide upon. And what's in it for them? Now here's a racing example, because all I know about the other scenario is best defined as desperate begging. Okay, racing. My name is Goggles Paisano, and by sponsoring my racing in the Armpit Kentucky Grand Prix, I will create sales and marketing activities that will surely drive fans to know your brand better, consider your brand more, and at the end of the day, buy more Axe body spray deodorants. Get it? The Armpit Kentucky Grand Prix deodorants? See how it fits in, sir? Okay, bad example, but the point is, just because you want to race may not be enough reason for someone to sponsor you. Your needs are not their needs, certainly not the needs of a brand trying to sell stuff. What you are selling is an opportunity for them to do business in a relevant arena. And racing may be cool to us, but it is only cool to a sponsor if there is a relevant fit between their product, their brand personality, their customer audience, and the personality and passion of racing and its audience. Or the theme of racing fits the sales and marketing message that they're trying to convey about that product. Now two other things when you're selling that I have seen trigger a sponsorship commitment. One, racing is a direct link to incremental business, usually a business to business deal. You bring more business to the sponsor, in return, they reward you with sponsoring their racing. Or number two, racing as an experience to share with their consumers or their business clients. In effect, hosting guests to get their attention, to build a relationship, to reward loyalty. Basically, hosting guests at the races versus a golf outing or a night out at a sports stadium concert or a Broadway show. So to recap, what are you selling? A platform for their sales and marketing needs, an incremental business deal a hosting experience for their customers. And with that, the answer to what, we've also addressed why companies sponsor, and a bit about how they justify it. Next, let's discuss who to target as a potential sponsor. And this topic also stays in the realm of relevant fit, because the racing environment and audience needs to make sense to the sponsor's brand image and objectives, remember? And it is not just brake pads or motor oils that fit in auto racing. There's a reason, for example, you see an M&M's car in racing. The theme of racing has to fit the brand or the audience, what they like, what they do. 
Something has to be relevant to the brand's business. And apparently, NASCAR showed M&M that their fans buy NASCAR stuff, or the percent of candy consumed by race fans is higher than the national average, and that racing could give M&M brand a personality bump with the images that racing conveys. Now, frankly, NASCAR is one of the best in the world for having legitimate sponsors in racing and brands that were introduced to the sales and marketing connection to racing. Not brands that have CEOs or presidents that like to race their LMP car. So you can hate on their racing in NASCAR, but you got to respect NASCAR's business acumen in racing. Okay, using M&Ms, someone to pitch to them, someone painted a picture of the auto racing brand and the brand of the particular racing series, whether it be sports car, rally, whatever. In this case, for M&Ms, it was NASCAR. Someone described what makes that racing as unique as can be from any other marketing spend, not just other racing allowing M&Ms to decide that this is the place they need to be. Remember, you're selling against anything that the company could spend their money on. Concerts, other sports sponsorships, store promotions, the Facebook rep that just took that dude out to the lunch club strip bar, anything. We have to make the racing platform unique, but still relevant. So if you say that racing is about speed, excitement, and competition, well, hey, I could be talking about anything. I could be talking about football. You've said nothing unique to racing. But if we brand racing as the cars, the passion of the car culture, what the fans are like, the shared experiences, the technology, the specialized skills of you and those other racing warriors, well, we start to differentiate this racing as unique from everything else. And yes, you will have to get into the exposure discussions, TV numbers, online coverage, the number of fans that attend races. But the starting point of targeting who to pitch as a sponsor starts with, does the brand fit the racing vibe? and the audience of the racing fan. And by the way, as much as this is a business decision for companies, it does not hurt to find a passionate car guy or car person in the company to become your inside champion to the cause. And as much as cold calling does deliver results in this world of fear of risk and lack of trust, networking to find people who know people to open doors and vouch for you is mega valuable too. So who to target? Brands that fit racing and the audience. Decision makers that like cars and who you know that knows someone to network to open that relevant door. Now there's another video we did on sponsorship that you should check out. The link is in the description below. Now while I'm not all that happy with my presentation style on that video, the info is worth knowing if you're seeking sponsorship as a racer or you're just a fan who wants to understand a little more. But for this video, the key point I'd like to leave you with on how sponsorships actually happen is this. It's all about listening. Too many sponsor pitches are just generic babble about racing and not honed in on what the audience wants and needs to hear. Don't think pitch, think needs, solutions for them. You'll get yours if you handle theirs. And if you understand that selling sponsorship is not about you, then listening to the potential sponsor asking questions about their business, their objectives, their needs, how they sell and how they do their marketing, all that will give you clues on how to present your sponsorship. Think of it as a post-session driver debrief. The engineer is listening to your feedback to figure out how to make the car work better to fit the needs. Sponsorship interaction with a prospect is the same approach. As it is with the barroom banter when you're trying to get Sally Mae Sasquatch to get conjugal with you. See, all I'm trying to do here is help you get laid, not get f Thank you.